The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time Wednesday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we got markets in positive territory right now. You got the SPs up 18 points, trading at 4,006. We got the NASDAQ 100. We're up an even 100 points right now. That's about eight tenths percent in the green. NASDAQ 100, you're more than 200 points off of the lows we had yesterday, 12,461. We are still about 800 points below where. Where Friday's escalation began from Jackson Hole. Dow up 106 points this morning, 31,883. You got Bitcoin back above 20,000, 20,240. How about that crew contract, man? You got almost a $10 move, folks, in 24 hours from 97.66. Early this morning, we're trading at 88.27. And just like that, crude has popped two dollars from that low but boy you're talking about quite a move to the downside from yesterday's high of 97.66 gold contract continuing to struggle down 12 dollars at 17.24 we got notes and bonds folks the theme lower price higher yield the 10-year negative three ticks we were as low as 116.22 in the early morning hours this morning you're down three ticks on the 10-year you're down 12 ticks right now on the 30-year we jump over to the vix volatility index this morning 25.93 yesterday's high 27.69 and i want to say hello to my son tommy o'brien are you watching tommy o'brien you watching he's out there watching folks he's having a happy little morning he's a happy little man and uh, yeah, let's get into it. All right, we kick things off with some ADP numbers, jobs numbers this morning. This ahead of Friday, we get the non-farm payroll number. Private payrolls growing by a 132,000 in August. ADP says in reworked jobs report, private payrolls 132,000 for the month. July was 270, so you back off a bit when you're talking about wages. How about annual pay? 7.6%. That number rising for inflation, uh, a little bit of a worry, but you see a pullback in the number they were looking for. The market was looking for an ad of about 300,000 jobs. So it comes in at half of that number. Uh, now, August payrolls, they mentioned here, notoriously volatile is how they put it. Notoriously volatile in already a very, very volatile market with the type of economic numbers we're getting. And uh, yeah, that comes ahead of Friday's non-farm payroll number. The Fed, of course, the market will be looking for that. We'll be looking for any impact that rising rates have had on the economy. We'll be looking for inflation in terms of wages, where they go. When you look at the private number, you're looking at wages, 7.6%. Quite a number. That's going to be hard to tame inflation when you got wages rising that much. The other argument is wages not even keeping up with inflation still. The last CPI print was... 8.5%, and we get August numbers for CPI, folks, I believe. We're going to get that number on Tuesday, September 13th. So Friday, September 2nd, we get the jobs number. We go away for the long weekend, Labor Day weekend. We come back on Tuesday, September 6th. We get CPI data for the month of August Tuesday, September 13th, and then the Fed meeting is the following week, September 20th and 21st, I believe, is that Fed meeting. All eyes will be on the Fed. Uh, the question, 50 or 75 basis points. The market leaning a little bit to 75 at this point. But it's all going to matter how that data comes out that we have for the month of August. It's August 31st, last trading day of the month, September 1st. Tomorrow we kick things off. And let's jump into some of the economic numbers on the meme stocks. Bed Bath & Beyond to sell stock and shut 150 stores in a survival bid. They are nearing. They don't have it done yet. A $375 million loan with 6th Street. They're going to cut 20% of the positions to reduce costs. Yeah, and they're building uh, a new... So they have commitments for a new $375 million first-in, last-out facility with 6th Street Partners and a $1.13 billion asset-backed revolving credit. Boy, they need a turnaround, folks, because uh, meme stocks aren't going to do it all. And now the meme leader himself, Cohen, has ditched that stock. 
And there's the action this morning. Uh, down to about nine bucks from 12, far off the highs we had of $30. I mean, remarkable, right? You had Cohen selling things off at what, 25, 26 bucks. He's not no, he's like not a fool, folks. Uh, remarkable, this thing just got back up to 15 bucks yesterday. You're trading at nine just that quickly, probably on your way back to $5 before this thing turns around. Let's jump around to some of the other meme stocks. AMC, $9.27, that's a solid, talk about a fall off, man. What's it, movie Movie theater day, September 3rd? Saturday, I believe, right? Let's pull it up, yeah, Saturday, $3 tickets, uh, basically across the country. So if you're looking to attend a movie on Saturday, $3, not a bad deal at many cinemas. Uh, National Cinema Day, coming to you. We jump over to GameStop. GME, I mean, look at the pullbacks in all these meme stocks. GameStop was just pushing 47 bucks this month, and you're going to open at 29. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks. As we get the NASDAQ 100 pushing 1% in the green right now, you're going to have Amazon. Put it back to a 15-minute chart right now, up a bit to about 130 for Amazon. Apple, biggest company in the world, 160.45. Yeah, it's almost a buck fifty to the upside. We're going to get a little bit of a lift. It's going to be interesting to see where this market goes in about 18 minutes when we start trading here. Let's jump over to Tesla shares. Tesla up at about 280 from a low of 272 yesterday. The Twitter saga playing on at about 39.51 so far for Twitter. We jump over to Best Buy. They had their numbers yesterday. Some decent numbers, but you gave it all back almost all of it back pretty much from where you closed out Monday's action. Best Buy sitting at about 74.57, down a bit on the open for Best Buy shares. And let's take a look at some of the commodities. Crude, we bounced to 88.27. Now, remarkably here, 85.41, folks, was where crude was trading at October of 2021, man. Now, things really accelerated towards the end of February when war broke out. But you see the acceleration this thing had from December, $62.43. You charge higher from a low of 66.12 at the end of December. You don't even stop until you hit 130. But remarkable, we pulled back right to 85.41. This morning, we got as low as 88.27. I mean, you're bumping into some pretty low areas that we've seen. You make it to a low of 87.01 back on August 5th. And yeah, even if you're looking for a bounce, folks, even if you think crude is going lower, I mean, it has potential here for 100 or 110 bucks easy. Yesterday, you were as high as 97. Today, you're back to 90. But volatility not going away anytime soon in that crude market. Let's jump over to gold. Continuing to struggle, man. If you're taking a look at gold, all right? I mean, you're bouncing near this lower boundary line. You make it to 1,700 or so, that's an area it's found support for the better part of you're talking about more than two years. I mean, look at gold was trading at 1,700. You back it up to June of 2020. Okay, now there's your COVID volatility. When COVID hits, you had gold at about 1,700. You trade down with everything to 1,450. Gold charges higher to 2,089. Since then, though, whether you found a bid in March of 2021, whether you found a bid on the spike low, down to 1677 in August of last year, so that's a year ago. And what's also happening here is that you're correlating to the 382 from the entire move lower that began, excuse me, the entire move higher that began from August of 2018 up to 2089. The 382 at about 1741, 1700, the round number, and we're right in the middle of that. Now, it doesn't mean it's going to hold, folks, but at least you have a price area you could set your stop at, 1700 gold, down 13 bucks. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back with our man Kevin Hinks of Fast Market on the TD Ameritrade Network. Be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Ta Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago. And the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P futures up 22 points right now. You're looking at a NASDAQ 100 up almost a full percent, up 120 points. You get the Dow up 100 points as well. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, right here on Tiger TV, Fast Market from the TD Ameritrade Network with your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White. Outstanding program, folks. The team at TD Ameritrade Network, they break you down, break you through the day's market action walk you through hypothetical trade setups uh, as we come into a pretty important month of September, last day of August today. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yep, we're, we're getting closer and closer to Friday's non-farm payroll data. Today we got the ADP data after yesterday's JOLTS report. And interesting, you know, the ADP basically shut down their data for a couple months to, re to refurbish it, rehash it. And uh, they've come out with some new numbers, a little more granule, a couple more features. So we got that data out this morning, Tommy. And it was a little lighter than expected, 132,000. You're looking for something right around 220, between 220 and 250. And breaking it down, Tommy, small businesses lost 47,000 jobs. That's 1 to 19. 20 to 49, gained 72,000 jobs. Mid-sized businesses 50 to 249 gained 74,000 jobs, 250 to 499 lost 21,000 jobs, and finally large businesses, 500 employees or more, gained 54,000 jobs, Tommy. But here's a new feature that ADP came out with. They have a median pay range in annual pay that they come out with. And what does that mean? Well, they have two categories, job stayers, and job changers, the people that stayed in their job, how much did their wages go up? The people that left, how much did theirs go up? And, Tommy, this is pretty alarming. Job stayers' pay went up by 7.6%. Job changers, people that moved from one company to the other, double. They, it went up by 16.1%. So, interesting. I think a lot of people are getting some resumes ready based on this number today, Tommy. That's quite a number, man. I hadn't seen that number. I appreciate the breakdown, some great stats in there. Uh, always interesting when you get the ADP number ahead of the non-farm payroll number on Friday. We've seen some huge divergences recently. It'll be interesting to see if some of that retooling, maybe it's not as divergent as some of the divergences in recent months past. 
Uh, but yeah, it, it would make sense, I guess, that you got to change jobs. But unfortunate, if you're uh, at a job that they appreciate what you're doing, that they're not rewarding you to the same degree. But that's the business, I guess, we're in right now in this economy. When we talked to you yesterday, Kevin, things didn't seem as dire at 9 o'clock uh, in the morning. Uh, yesterday morning, a little bit of a sell-off to accelerate things. What was your take on, on kind of the sell-off continuing Friday's action? We got a pause in Monday. We talked about that yesterday. But boy, things heated up a little bit yesterday uh, after we spoke early in the day. Yeah, it's interesting. You and I were talking yesterday. The futures were all up, much like they are now. And we were talking about, I wasn't sure why they were up, frankly. And it turns out, they didn't spend very much time up once the market opened, Tommy. So, uh, yeah, interesting. But here, nevertheless, we start today up again. The Nasdaq up more than 1%. The E-minis up about 6 tenths. Uh, Russell and uh, the Dow up between 3 and 4 tenths there. So an interesting start today. You've got the dollar slightly higher. You've got yields slightly higher. And you got crude oil, another alarming sell-off in crude oil, Tommy. So crude oil hit 88.27 this morning uh, in the overnight trade. So, you know, this two-day sell-off in crude oil, pretty alarming here, Tommy. The moves everywhere are just amazing, man. As a trader, you know, we got $10 moves in the price of crude right now. Gold continuing to struggle to find a bid with a strong dollar. Makes some sense. And, and you know, yields, the 10-year, 3.12 about uh, this morning. Just action everywhere in this market. So we go forward, Kevin. We have some numbers out for the week, but all eyes probably going to be on Friday's number for non-farm payrolls. We come into a long weekend. Always interesting when you got three days off, man. Who's going to who's going to be riding their position through the long weekend? Considering the news that we get on Friday, we come back September sixth, and I believe we get CPI data for the month of August out the following week. I think it's September thirteenth, and then we roll right into a Fed meeting. Uh, you always talk about the economic numbers that are most important. I know non-farm payrolls, I believe you've said, is the number one item up there. We get that one in about 48 hours. Uh, are all eyes right now, Kevin, really going to be on that number on Friday? And I know this is your opinion, man, you know, deciding where eyes are on this market. There's so much going on. But is that the number Friday? Is the number the CPI data that we get out later in the month of September for August? What are you kind of looking for? Are those the two data points that are going to decide where the Fed goes come their September meeting? Well, in terms of economic data, you're right, Tommy. The non-farm payroll number, just because of the vast amount of information you get from that one report, is the number one report of the month. Now, CPI has gained incredible importance because of inflation and how we look and how the market trades. So, yeah, non-farm payrolls and CPI, if you're going to only look at two, those are the two I'd really watch. Now, the Fed likes PCE data in income and outlays that we got last week. They like to look at that. That showed a nice break in overall inflation. But, Tommy, think about this. A lot of the break that we got in inflation was crude oil, right? Now, crude oil had, until yesterday, been on a nice little track of rallying back. It got up to over ninety-seven and a half dollars. Well, that ninety-seven and a half to eighty-eight went really fast. So, how is energy going to affect inflation going forward? And how is, frankly, government spending that just popped up in the last two weeks going to affect overall inflation? So, Tommy, yeah, I think Jerome Powell's statement reflected a little bit of frustration uh, in terms of his fighting. Uh, inflation and who's fighting against him. I think the market is trying to figure out what all of this means. It's been a pretty weak cu couple days here, and so we'll keep trading them, Tommy. You make a great point with oil, and we've talked about it recently uh, with rates as well. I got a chart of the 10 year up here on the Thinkorswim platform. Beginning of August, price wise, we were sitting at a, almost a 122 handle. I believe I do. We have a 122 handle on the 10 year on August 2nd. Point being, it's been lower price, higher yield for the entire month of August right now as we're at 3.12, and that's just the 10-year, let alone what's going on with the two-year, the 30-year, et cetera. But we have a 116 handle down from a 122 handle to kick off the month. That may be a factor as well. With that in mind, Kevin, what are you guys talking about at 12 o'clock today on Fast Market? Slow day for earnings, but we'll certainly uh, come up with some names coming out with earnings after the bell. Okta. Uh, in, in the tech sector, and then like Foley will do a presentation on five below. In the last segment, we're frankly going to look for something interesting that, that breaks 
from the open here. So we, we, we've got two of the three uh, decided so far. Tommy, the last one, we're going to go agile and go with the most, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of in a lull. Tomorrow we get some good earnings, but today a little bit of a, a lull period. So we're, 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 we're waiting for something to move here, and we'll trade that. Well, there's been no lulls on the open recently, so you may get some action, man, for that third equity, I imagine. And five below, I got that chart up on the Thinkorswim platform. Quite a pullback to 129, folks. If you're looking at my chart on Tiger TV, a COVID low of $47. We make it up to 237. And where do we pull back to? Kind of right around the 618 retracement is kind of where we're bouncing at right now. But boy, tough year right now for five below. Kevin, we appreciate the time as always, man. We'll be watching at 12 o'clock today for Fast Market. You have a great one, and we'll talk to you tomorrow, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. Always a pleasure. Folks, tune in every trading day with everything going on in this market. It is a great time. You talk about implied volatility. You talk about options. You talk about defined risk. Outstanding program, 12 o'clock every day with our man Kevin Hanks and Tom White from the TD Ameritrade Network right here on Tiger TV. Stay tuned, folks. S&P's up by 20. We'll be right back for the open. of looming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We've got markets open. You're looking at S&P. Gives back some of those gains a little bit right near the open right now. We were just as high as 4,010. You're flirting with 4,000 on the dot right now. S&P's up by 13. NASDAQ 100 up by 102 points. You get the Dow giving back some of those gains. Still up by about 42. We get the crew contract trading back lower. 89.70 in crude right now. We'll be talking to our man Teddy Kegstat next segment coming up. Uh, we'll talk some Forex. We'll talk some crude. Uh, we'll talk some markets, some yield as well. Gold contract down about 13 bucks. And folks, check out the next segment with Teddy. If you're not watching currencies right now, that dollar index, my goodness, controlling so much of what's going on across the globe, whether it's currencies or yields that are very related. And then commodities follow suit there. And commodities, a big part of inflation, which drives the markets, right? A very reasonable one, two, three step where everything is so interrelated right now. You have yields impacting currencies, currencies, of course, impacting yields, Federal Reserve, central banks, impacting yields, impacting the strength of currencies, that therefore impacting commodities and commodities weighing very heavily on inflation. One of the big reasons we may be better off than Europe is because of the big problems they got with energy coming for the foreseeable future, folks. Relying on Russia, hindsight 2020, but boy, that was a big mistake, and they're paying for it right now. Uh, they have inflation, and they have commodities that are going to be a continuing problem on that economy. The 10-year right now sitting with a yield of about 3.12 percent. All right, let's jump around, see how many stocks, some of those FANG stocks are opening up. Amazon shares gives back some of the gains. You got a little weakness right now. Dow just turned red pretty quickly, man. Dow was up 100 points when I was chatting with Kevin, I believe, only 20 minutes ago. s and is clinging on to gains by single digits. You're below 4,000, though. Amazon up by a third of a percent this morning. Apple shares up by about four tenths percent. Google shares this morning up by a full percent. Look at that pop on Google shares. Let's see how Facebook's trading. Look at that. What's going on with Facebook this morning? We got, we got news? So what do they got? They got a uh, 8K filing or something like that. What's going on with Facebook? Maybe somebody's got it in the den, but nonetheless, something's going on, man. You got Facebook up 5.2% right now this morning. Yeah, and they got some news for sure. Facebook catching a little bit of a lift in a flat market right now. Uh, and let's jump back to Amazon because I was talking about this earlier in the week. I got an article pulled up here. So it's been five years since Amazon purchased Whole Foods. And their CEO is retiring. Amazing that he stayed on that long, many said. You know, you imagine that Amazon scooped up Whole Foods. What was the plan exactly? Uh, five years it's been. Now, Amazon, I was reading an article on CNBC last week, I believe. $13.7 is what they paid for that company. Not much when you consider the size of the company that Amazon is. They got 500 stores into physical retail. Now, the remarkable thing is here, I haven't read this entire article yet, but Amazon has barely made quite the dent that many had imagined when stocks were reacting the day of. When this happened, folks, you had stocks that were in the grocery business tanking, okay? Thinking that, of course, Amazon was getting into the business, last thing you want to hear, right? They're the king of process. They're going to accelerate things. They're going to eat everybody's lunch, okay? But Amazon right now controls only 1% of the U.S. grocery market, 1.3%, okay? To put that in context, I think Walmart is pushing about 19 or 17%. Kroger's is pushing, uh, Kroger, excuse me, is pushing 7 or 9%, I think, is the number, okay? So they have barely tapped into what is potential there in that market, and it's important to remember anytime Amazon gets into a business, as much of a bull as I may be long term on Amazon, sometimes people have the ability to overstate how quickly they may be able to change an industry just getting into it. Um, and in the den right now, they're talking about Whole Foods has degraded after Amazon acquired it. I, I haven't been in Whole Foods in a while, so I'm not really aware of how that's played out. But the bottom line is Amazon you would not think still would control 1% of the grocery market five years ago when they made that purchase. Just something to keep in mind. The next time that they're trying to acquire somebody, you see them getting into healthcare right now, right? The future, probably very promising, all right? And healthcare is a little different in terms of the ability for Amazon to function online and how they can facilitate a shift to an online atmosphere for maybe telehealth. 
The grocery market, which is what people were saying when they got into it, man, it is a tough, tough market. You are dealing with razor slim margins in that industry. Very difficult to turn a huge profit in the grocery business. But the one thing that Amazon could do is they could just run that thing even at a loss, which they've been known to do, of course, to acquire customers, maybe use it as a perk for Prime members, et cetera. But remarkable when you think five years later that they control 1% of the grocery market, considering what do they have? Like 50% of the online retail, right? Remarkable. All right, let's jump back to the market because so much for gains. Let's get Kevin Hanks back on the line and ask him what he thinks about now, man. We're going to have to recalibrate our morning conversations knowing that the market opens and we consider uh, that we're tanking quite a bit. S&Ps just gave up 20 points just like that, folks, in the span of about 10 minutes. Very tough to find a bid in this market right now. Let's jump over to the dollar index, see how we're trading right now on that type of action. Dollar index above 109 right now. We were as high as about 109.50 earlier in the week. You've just been chopping around for a bit. Let's check out yields, how they're moving with some market action right now. Yeah, a little bit of lower price as we climb. We're talking about uh, a 10-year right now approaching 3.5%. We're sitting at 3.132. So we're approaching... And as Kevin said, you know, crude prices, all right, so we're talking about CPI, we're talking about data that's going to shape inflation, okay? You take a look at crude prices for the month, and, you know, we began the month of August, and that's, it's tough to remember that we had decent numbers coming out of July, but a lot of the impact was the fact that crude prices were dropping the entire month. I mean, look where we started July about 110, all right? This is a perfect segue as we come into our next segment with Teddy Kegstad. We started July off at about 110, folks. There's July 5th. We had 111.45, okay? We ended July at about $95. Well, what happened? We came into August. August 1st, you start things off with a bang, man. You trade from 98 down to 94. You continue that run August 5th, make a low of 87.01. And we've kind of been chopping, chopping around between 88 and 95, a lower trading range than we had been in for the better part of, again, the month of July. So it's going to be interesting because even though we've had a little bit of a rise recently, when you look at the entire month of August, crude prices probably going to be helpful to the CPI numbers yet again. But here's the dilemma. What happens in September, man? Because... You have crude jumping around between 85 and 95 bucks for the entire month of August. That's going to be a tough one to replicate in terms of lower prices. Are you really telling me that we're going to get 75 to 85 dollar crude? Maybe we do, but that's a tough one. When we were just trading 125 earlier in that, in terms of where the run really began. Because there's been broad increases, folks, still in the CPI numbers, whether you talk about shelter, whether you talk about food, still going up. The only reason that it wasn't as dramatic is because you did have decreasing numbers for energy. That's going to be the case probably barely in August and probably going to be a tough one to replicate as we come into September as well. All right, folks, stay tuned. S&Ps back in the green by four. We'll be coming back, talking to Teddy. We'll talk a little bit of Forex. We'll talk a little bit of commodities. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S and P's right now up by eight points, trading at thirty nine ninety six, giving back some of those pre market gains on the open. Let's jump over to our man Teddy Kegstad, folks. Every Wednesday we talk to Teddy at forty past the hour. Put it on your calendar, but you can talk about forex with Teddy. Sign up for the Tiger Forex Report. He puts out an update every Monday, folks. Goes over a variety of markets. You can check it out right on the front page of TFNN. Under the Newsletters tab, the Tiger Forex Report, you can subscribe. He releases that every Monday and updates follow throughout the week when warranted. Covers all the major Forex pairs. You're talking about crude in there, 30-year bond. And man, with this market, we got everything rocking right now with currencies. Teddy Kegstack, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. So uh, we got fireworks all over the place, man. I always enjoy talking crude. We always enjoy talking the Forex markets and how they're shaping things. Where do you want to start this morning as we kind of go around? Uh, well, we can start with the crude market. Obviously, very interesting trade going on there the past uh, couple of days, right? Oof. You talk about some moves, man. Mm -hmm. uh, What's your... What yeah. my take is that is that oil is kind of interesting with how it rallied up and now it's come back. I think the traders are really focused on that recent swing high more than they are the current swing low that it's making right now. So, I mean, if you look at the currencies, they really were the, the oil move actually was boosting the dollar. And now with the sell off, I mean, it's a very short term sell off. It doesn't seem to be twitching the dollar very much. It kind of did a little bit early this morning. There was a little indifference around the dollar, if you will. Um, but as a whole, I'm pretty surprised at how it's holding up. And I think that means that right now they're looking at oil as being a very uh, much in a, still in a buy dip scenario so um i think that you're looking at a bear trap forming right now yeah from a fundamental perspective of the little fundamentals i understand of the crude market man it would kind of blow my mind if you if you were able to blow through 90 85 dollars to the downside right now as we come mm -hmm. into winter with everything going on just kind of from a you know mental psyche type attitude right. man um i think i saw 363 at the gas tank near me 383 something like wow. that recently um yeah and i said the same thing wow i said that was a quick pullback man mm -hmm. I, I i don't think our brains need lower price right now with everything going on in the crude it sounds horrible you know what i mean but right. but that's I, so I, I, I i totally do tommy and you know what i think it's also reflective that what I just the point I just brought up is that if you look at the interest rate market, we had a nice um, bottom last week in the both the ten year and the thirty year. We had a nice little bounce, and guess what? Now we are here making new move lows. You know, so that that weakness in the interest rate market means that we're looking obviously at the unemployment number coming out. We have some very big economic numbers once again coming out in a few weeks. We have a Fed meeting, you know, that's only three weeks away. 
And I think that no matter what, the yields are going to continue to press forward, you know, with the trend. And if that's the case, then this little snap back to this, um, to pressing support in oil, I think, is going to actually come back, you know, very quickly back to the 90, 95 area. And 95 is the, is the key level, you know, like if we get oil spiking above 95 this week was uh, crucial in my mind because that's a key directional pivot. The more we flirt with 95, the more likely we are to go back above 100, you know, 100 and, uh, you know, 100 to 110 in that area, you know. Yeah. So I think that, I think that really is something that's at least right now is more likely to occur you know i mean i wish oil would go back down to 50 you know but i'm or i can't think about what i'd like right now i'm looking at yes. what looks like the reality you know yeah. and also with the dollar is being reflective of that also you know the reality is is that dollar strength right now is here it's not going away you know and the other currencies around the world like the uk is in trouble um, the EU is in trouble financially, you know, I mean, like they really are coming into this, uh, the end of the third quarter, you know, and I think that <clears throat> even though Labor Day is something that we celebrate here as after we after Labor Day, that last few weeks of the trade going into third quarter and uh, third quarter end, I think is going to be very crucial to set the trend moving forward for not just fourth quarter, but maybe even for the next three quarters, you know, as we move forward going uh, into 2023. And especially interesting, of course, we get non-farm payroll this Friday into it. Then we get some CPI numbers out, and then you have the Fed, mm -hmm. um, the 20th, 21st, I believe. Jump into the euro since you mentioned it. I want to talk about the euro, of course. Uh, we okay. have a question in the den just talking about what the projection is for the euro in general. But before I get to that, we're at basically parity right now, almost to the tick on the euro mm -hmm. us dollar and if you could talk about the euro and then talk about sure. how you talk about the pound sometimes for those maybe listeners that haven't okay. watched it and you get that divergence because we do have i was checking out pound um a little bit of exacerbated action maybe when you look at the pound where it is versus the mm -hmm. euro you know back to the recent low so maybe we could start off the euro and then kind of tie in that conversation with the pound in your in your take there Absolutely. So right now, you know, the reality is the euro and the pound have both been beaten up pretty hard, you know, and they are very strong currencies. I mean, as far as size wise globally, you know, so um, but the euro, I think, is going to continue to trend, lo trend lower. You know, I mean, the reality is that the, the numbers that are coming out in Germany over the past few weeks have become I mean, they're just shattering, you know, like the whole concept of having any type of a bounce in their economy. The reality is they are in a recession. OK, there's there's no doubt about the fact that Germany and as well as the EU is in a recession right now. What in what type of viewpoint is there out there that's strong enough that would reverse that trend? There's nothing, you know, there's nothing that they can do right now that they can do things that may put the brakes on things, but they're not going to be able to get a bounce. There's no strength coming in the euro, <clears throat> um, especially the euro US dollar trade, unless there's a big weakness in the dollar. You know, so that's why I think you're going to see the euro US dollar trend down to, I mean, 98 half to 97 half, I think is going to be the first kind of buffering support where you'll probably see a little digestion occur where it'll probably bounce between that 97 half and 99 even area as it tries to basically lock in a trade below parity. And I think that's the next thing that we're going to see as as these numbers decay that we're going to see that kind of it's it's not going to be just a violent trend to the downside at least that's where the way I'm looking at it I think the euro is just going to keep on making lower floors and then kind of bobble around you know so I would be very careful buying dips you know if you have a very valid buy signal I wouldn't tell you not to take it but be very mindful of the fact that the euro US dollar right now is going to be in a sell rally forecast you know and the, and the pound also <clears throat> which you mentioned that one's already making newer move lows the euro was the one leading the charge okay but now the euro is hovering at that parity level which is a very psychic you know psychological number if you will definitely um, the pound, I don't think, is it's not going to parity anytime soon, you know. However, it is going to most likely continue to trend lower. And the fact that it made a lower move low in front of the euro, that little bit of divergence isn't a buying indication. I think what it means is that you're going to see both of these currencies unravel, you know, some more, especially after we get in past Labor Day. I mean, we do have this Fed meeting, you know. I mean, unless you're going to see the ECB, you know, or, you know, the Bank of England come out and say that we're going to start raising aggressively, what is there to hold it up, you know? So I think that sure. it's just it's just a matter of right now the swings are the dollars in a buy dip scenario and 
especially currencies like the euro and the pound, they're in a sell rally scenario. So you have to be very careful. You know, I mean, you can nibble it. I would say take profits as the market goes lower, but don't try and buy into that right now. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And that's what sparked the question almost the pound trading below kind of the lows that it had recently of 118. Mm -hmm. You're sitting at 160 and euro kind of stuck at that level. Uh, if you wouldn't mind hanging on for two minutes, Teddy, all right, we'll come back. Sure. I want to talk to you a little bit about the yen, of course, because we got some yes. listeners. And then we got a question in the Tigers, then just talking about generally the strong dollar and maybe breaking those emerging markets or how you look okay. at that scenario, man, because it's got to be tough on some of those. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish the conversation. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tigers Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professionals traders during market hours and now they are expanding their reach with the tiger's den available to all tigers and tigresses for just one dollar for the year there's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders in the tiger's den you can look over the shoulders of tom o'brien and the other tfnn hosts while they analyze charts during their live tiger tv programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up 25 points right now. We trade lower. We bounce from about 935. We're up almost 30 points off of where we were just in the last 20 minutes or so. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstat. So, Teddy, jumping to uh, maybe the yen real quick, if we can jump over. We're challenging those sure. recent highs. We had 109 yesterday, uh, excuse me, 139 yesterday. We're almost up at that level right now. What's your take on, on the yen? 
Oh, I think we're going to take out the uh, recent swing highs and press to that uh, 140 number. And then I think we're going to keep on creeping higher. I can see us getting up to probably that 142 half to 140, uh, uh, excuse me, um, 143 even area. I think then you'll see a little pause. You know, I'm not looking for any really explosive rally against the yen, um, but just with the current numbers and also especially with the uh, 30 year and the 10 year pressing on, uh, you know, yields higher, I think that you're going to see the I think that if oil especially comes back up, you're going to see it be up at 142 before you know it. You know, so nice. I don't think you're going to see any really big sell off. Or I mean, if if these highs get rejected, well, then we may see a nice little correction. But even still, I think that's a correction to buy unless you would have to have some kind of action, not speak, but action come out of uh, Japan, because we already know that they spoke a couple times months ago, and that didn't yield anything. So until they actually do, um, I, I would say that the trend is your friend, and we're going to see higher move highs. It's a tough take to argue against, man. A lot of green bars on that chart of the U.S. dollar <laughs> yen. Uh, and just in general, they were talking about in the den, man, the strong dollar, it's got to be so tough even on Europe. They're dealing with such mm -hmm. woes right now. Uh, but then you put it onto emerging markets. Is that something you're looking at at all? I mean, obviously, they're in trouble. But mm -hmm. but where do you see that that shift, man? Because I can't imagine trying to be in some market like that where you get the dollar mm -hmm. just crushing you as you have their costs rising anyway, let alone the currency problems. Mm -hmm. Uh, great question. Um, this gets back to, um, I think it was already four or five weeks ago, I brought up the velocity of the dollar and how it was crashing and its impact on global markets and especially emerging markets, those with um, lesser values. Yeah, it's going to continue. We have another uh, good year and a half of this. The dollar strength is going to keep impacting those markets. A year and a half. Yeah, we the trends yeah. seem like they're in place, man. I, I like good. the take. Teddy, thanks as always, man. We'll talk to you next week. Folks, right, try out the Tiger Forex report, 30-day money-back guarantee. Stay tuned for Basil up next.